Hello and welcome to Quartz Light Your Car Brochure channel. In today's episode, we're going to continue our March 1997 Ford story. We're up to the Ford Sierra Sapphire. Hello and welcome back. Now, if you're new to Quartz Light, yes, we're a car brochure channel here on YouTube looking at car brochures from around the world for the 60s, 70s, 80s and 90s and sometimes beyond that as well. So if you're interested in cars, of course, car brochures, looking back at cars gone by and sprinkled with some car knowledge from the time, then please do consider subscribing. It is all completely free. Now back to today's episode. We've been looking through this March 1987 brochure for a Ford all car range in the UK. We're up to the Ford Sierra Sapphire. So let's throw that on the board and have a little bit of talk about this and well let's let's have a look at it anyway. So here is today's brochure, Ford Cars, March 1987. We've been going for the range. We looked at Orion last week, um, kind of like the car that was there really as a safety gap, really, because Sierra didn't have a saloon or a car with a boot in that sort of Cortina Sierra class. Well, March 1987 Ford all-car range here. He's showing the Ford Sierra Sapphire for the first time in an all-range brochure. Um, the other brochure that I was going to look at was the February 1987, but Sapphire not in there. That's the first time it appears, so that's really the reason why I chose the brochure to begin with. So that's what we're going to look at, the Ford Sierra Sapphire. Now, next week, um, next week's going to be I've kind of like changed it up a little bit because this shows the last of the old versions of the Sierra and obviously this is the first versions of the Sierra so I think next week we'll look at these sort of like end of line sort of like first generation do we call them Mark 1s? Earlier Sierras anyway um, next week and then we'll look at the newer version the week after because the Sierra is like the end of the line of this first design phase some unusual models in there actually some quite rare ones at the end um, and then we'll go back to our brochures the week after to look at the new versions of the Sierra and then I think we'll come back to this one again the week after because it's actually February 1987 is the last time we see the Ford Capri right at the end there it's gone by this brochure so that's interesting like I said this is why I've kind of like chose these two brochures and we've been kind of like looking at them and seeing what's different but like i say for the sierras the episode will be too big if we did that but for the sierra sapphire there's nothing to be seen in there so we are completely concentrating on this one brochure this week for this sierra sapphire so let's open that brochure up now the ford sierra sapphire seen here in gear guys they always like to show the highest spec models of course but headlight wiper moment but let's turn to the range proper because we've got a lot to get through. So this is how your range starts. Starting with the Sierra Sapphire Saloon, the not even the L version and then the L shown here on this page. I believe that this is probably a Sapphire L, the main picture. I don't think there's... They've kind of like ignored that base model and it was a strange one as late as this. I know they've done it before with the previous uh, version of the Sierra, but... It seemed almost non-relevant. I mean, who got the Sierra Sapphire Saloon? Even my dad, um, he had a company car, and it, it was the L version, at least. He never was offered the Saloon version. He actually had a 1.8 L as a company car on an E-plate, so a little bit later than this, but still. That Sapphire Saloon seems a strange one, and the description is almost... Well, we've also got this model as well. There's not really any sort of description or specifications noted in this brochure. Almost like the, by this date, they're almost embarrassed to have it, which begs the question why it's there. Maybe to show, you know, the Sierra Sapphire rain starts at, you know, and make it come across a little bit lower. I'm not sure. I'm sure there were fleets of them somewhere, but like I said, 
even my dad on his company car at least got the L version so that was a strange one but we'll start by reading the uh, about the Sapphire Saloon and then we'll get to this main model so here it is the base model Sierra Sapphire Saloon Ford's new Sierra Sapphire Saloon is proof that a stylish practical well equipped and good to drive car need not be expensive to run or buy or buy or run uh, like the rest of the new Ford Sierra range this elegant and practical four door is engineered to cut the cost of ownership and then doesn't tell you about any of the specifications he just says look at the back it's the forgotten model almost a bit embarrassed about this one I did have a quick look at the specifications on that so it only came with a 1.6 litre four speed that's all you could get for that which is a weird thing particularly in 87 to still be offering four speed gearbox on this class of car seems bizarre and then they've got like emissions like it didn't come with wheel trims it just had the like the center caps a very traditional ford thing to do with lower end models more basic radio things like that you get the picture but moving down to the l it tells us the Sierra Sapphire L's wide ranging attractions include the availability of Ford's advanced 1.8 litre lean burn engine. This lively power unit can be combined with the equally efficient A4LD auto transmission, whose state of art design incorporates an overdrive on fourth gear. So unlike the very base model, you could have a choice of engines, so you can get a 1.6, 1.8, and even a 2.3 litre diesel. Five-speed gearbox is standard, at least, on this model. Like I said, that, that base model was strange. Um, easily adjusted remote control door mirrors, plastic wheel arch liners, front and rear, combat corrosion, and reduced noise levels. We've got a concealed drip rail to roof, heated rear window with energy saving auto switch off, door panels fully trimmed in helix cloth plus storage bins on front doors, driver's seat has luxury of height adjustment, uh, heater controls with illuminated surround and switch for three speed fan and we've got a high quality all electronic self seek FM cassette with six speakers so that was quite nice for this model to get six speakers on this lowly L model for the time all coming at group 4 insurance so here is our main image and voice it falls on the crease so it looks a little bit odd particularly at the roof line there but believe me it didn't come like that but yeah this is going to be the L model we can tell because it's got wheel trims on it and that base model didn't have wheel trims but we've got headrests on there we've got you know a nice um stereo radio cassette player with six speakers so i don't think the l was badly equipped really for the time i know ford can be very miserly about lower end trims but you know it was basic i mean we'll have a look at it in a moment but still i don't think it was too bad uh, but moving down so here is the dash and steering wheel it tells us carefully designed controls and instruments clearly visible through the two spoke steering wheel make the new Sapphire L, very user friendly from the driver's all important uh, viewpoint. And you know, we even get little things like a little uh, joystick type thing control for the speakers. We get a clock, we get a radio, things would have been unheard of, of course, on your base model 10 years ago. Uh, but of course, no rev counter is certainly an emission. Uh, moving on. Gear lever and handbrake below are incorporated in a long centre console. Belt buckles move with the seats. Looks like we get ABS available as an extra cost as well. Bit of a number plate on this one, D426PJN. I wonder if that is still around. The Sierra Sapphire L's attractions, which are going to be below. So I guess we should move the camera down. Include seats trimmed in Lorenzo cloth, height um, adjustment for the driver's seat, and a vanity mirror on the passenger's sun visor. The spacious boot is illuminated at night. All of the fancy. We got sort of manual uh, windows, but I think you would expect that on the base model. At least we've got headrests. Maybe Ford is starting to think headrests may have a use in the UK. This is 1987, thank you Ford. 
And actually, surprisingly, even that very base model came with headrests. All the Sierra range at this time has now got headrests on them. When did that get mandated in the UK? Maybe that ties in with that. I know Ford was always resistant in the UK. You know, in Australia, they would have been having to mandate decades for um, headrests for decades now, of course. I always thought that was a bit strange about the UK market and not mandating that earlier because they're kind of like, well, particularly they restrict people in the UK for every little thing. You need a license to walk down the street now. But that is your base model and your L. But moving up, I'm moving up from an L to a up the range at this time for Ford. Meant going to the LX, or we have to wait for the GL. If they've, they've put a little bit of an LX trim level in there between. Quite like the look of the LX, though. There's lots of two colour treatments, and we got red inserts in the bumpers to, to kind of like donate a little bit of sportiness, although in reality, same engine choice. Although I think you can get a two litre now, actually, so maybe a little bit sportier, but there it is the LX. Like I say, I like the look of it with its two toned colours. Still wheel trims, of course, though, but we'll have a look at the text and see what this one's all about. Again, it says we can have ABS as an option. Sunroof standard now, though. Uh, sunroof and tinted glass are typical of the equipment that makes the Sierra Sapphire LX a very attractive car at a very attractive price. The availability of Ford's efficient 2.0-litre engine makes this elegant newcomer an ideal car for business. Key features, choice of a 1.6 or 1.8, and now a 2.0-litre. I know when my dad got the company car, the 1.6 and the 1.8 was exactly the same price, so he just said, I'll have a 1.8 then. I'm not sure if that was the case now, though. Um, we can also get the 2.0-litre, like I say, so a bit more performance. Probably this 2.0-litre was probably the engine to go for. Ford smooth, precise 5-speed gearbox is standard with all power units. Bumpers and wide bodyside mouldings with smart, distinctive Cobra Red inserts twin remote control door mirrors full wheel covers tinted glass we've got a sunroof which i always quite like the sunroofs i know there was only a manual sunroof but they were quite nice for the time that sort of tilt and slide uh color keyed velour carpet a helix cloth trim seat and door panels Convenience and comprehensive storage facilities include front door bins, glove box, coin box and long tunnel mounted central console. We've got the high quality all electronic self-seek FM cassette with six speakers. We've now got a tachometer. And an instrument panel has a real stat and enhanced illumination. So I think overall the LX was probably worth moving up to if you was going to buy it. For yourself as in a private car i think this was like the start of the range for you in reality and like i said i like that two tone two colors on there i think it quite suits it a look from the rear as well and if i zoom in we can see how it's badged this is sierra it's like a 1.8 lx little sapphire name underneath the sierra i always thought at this time there was always very hard to read the badge whether it was a 1.6 or a 1.8 because the design was exactly the same. The 1.6 just stopped, like the number six, just stopped a little bit earlier on that top curl than the eight. There was very subtle differences. I think they did that on purpose, but yeah, it was quite hard, hard to read if it was a 1.8 or a 1.6 until you got close. Um, we can also see on there the little red banding on the bumper for the LX version. A look at the interior. Not vastly different really from the uh, L version. Although they are we're getting that manual sunroof as standard. Anium is trying to show us that red insert again. I, be, I believe this is a little bit of a look at the instrument panel lighting to make it dimmer or brighter. Have a look at the rear and the uh, you know, how much luggage can get from in the back. And I know that was always a big thing with my dad. He came from a trying for claim into a Ford Sierra Sapphire and I think he appreciated that the boot was now big enough to put everything in there on sort of like holidays and that and there it is again and look at the dash telling you now we have got a rev counter which is probably what you wanted 
Then we move up to kind of the start of the more upper range models, the Ford Sierra Sapphire GL. So I think nicer trim, looks like nicer cloth on the seats there. I just think the big thing about the GL though was um, we've got central locking and any lower than this, it's a big car not to have central locking really, but this is where central locking comes in. Uh, but we'll have a look at the uh, level of trim. Also, the ABS still isn't standard, it's still an option. Uh, so high security locks come complete with the convenience of motorized central locking system when you buy a Sierra Sapphire GL. The distinctively luxurious specifications also embraces such things as electrically operated and heated door mirrors and extra insulation for exceptionally low noise levels. Engine choice, 1.8, so no 1.6 now, so 1.8, 2 litre and a 2.3 litre diesel. And we've got high tech colour toned polycarbonate bumpers and stylish black body side mouldings, both with bright inserts. So we've gone back to bright inserts. Ford used to like to say, you know, red for sporty, bright inserts for luxury. Um, electrically powered and heated door mirrors now. We still get full wheel covers or wheel trims, but apparently they're unique to the GL, i.e. they're a little bit different. Uh, motorized central locking system with torx key is more reliable than a solenoid or vacuum operated type and can be operated from the driver or passenger's door. We get tinted glass, we get a sunroof, we get storage bins. We get an illuminated glove box and tumble mounted console with box for cassettes. Supported seats fully trimmed with luxurious strobe and crushed velour fabric. So there we go. We've certainly gone up market on the seat coverings. Door panels fully trimmed with star line cloth. We get a 60 40 split fold rear seat back as central armrest for increased comfort. And we get extra sound insulation. Highlights the superb quality of the all electronic self seek FM cassette with six speakers. So we're still at Group 4 mainly, but the 2 litres moved up to a Group 5 insurance in the UK. Look on the inside, we notice we've still got keep fit windows though, so you're having to uh, wind the windows up and down by your own power. Um, seats do look nicer though, and like I said, I've always said this, velour is my favourite trim, so a lot nicer. We've got that split fold rear seat, and we've got a centre armrest now. A bit of a dull colour, but nevertheless, it's certainly a step up. Here is a little box you get with the GL with those places to put your cassettes. There's your rear seat folded down. Rear armrest for extra comfort. And there is your GL Sapphire in motion and you can see those a little bit of a different wheel trim for them. Quite a pleasant colour this one though. Then we get to the Sierra Sapphire GLS. Interestingly, long after um, my dad's company car was given back, to the company and he got a different company car. A few years later my mum bought a very used Sierra Sapphire GLS in white and it was certainly a huge step up from my dad's lowly L. Headlamp wipers for goodness sake. All of the fancy. So we'll start up here reading the text and then we'll see what extra features we get on the GLS which I always thought was a nice, a nice version. Like the LX it had red inserts denoting sporty and of course GLS, we always remember the S packs of old, no spot lamps on there unfortunately though, but let's have a look and see what we get. So sporting enough to sprint from 0 to 60 in 9.3 seconds, the stylish Sierra Sapphire GLS gets its vivid performance from a 2 litre EFI engine with Ford's EEC IV computerised management system. Bosch fuel injection combines efficiency with exhilaration, so only one engine choice now. Moving down, it repeats itself, telling us about that 2 litre EFI engine with the Bosch in L Jetronic fuel injection. Telling us um, it's got a management system capable of processing 250,000 sensor inputs per second. Power climbs to 115 PS at 5500 RPM. We get power complemented by fully independent sports suspension with variable rate rear springs and uprated front stabilizer bar, integral front fog lights, 
electrically operated heated door mirrors in stylish body colour housings. Um, we got wheels with a wheel cover. Apparently another one that's unique, although I quite like the wheel covers on the GLS. They almost look like alloy wheels from a distance, which is clever and a little bit naughty, isn't it? Maybe just throw alloys on there, maybe Ford, but Ford says no. Bumpers and wide body side mouldings with Cobra red inserts. Lower body side painted to match bumpers. Tinted glass, tilt or slide sunroof. We also get what it calls an attractive sports steering wheel with central push for two-tone horn. We get instruments include a tachometer that helps make full use of that two-liter EFI engine. We get a similar sort of high quality electronic self-seek FM cassette and we get electrically operated front windows now. And these are a group five insurance zoom into the front end there's those uh, wheel trims that look a little bit at least like alloy wheels and quite suited or like would have been nicer to throw alloys on there we do rather interestingly get that headlamp wiper wash wipe which was unusual um, and of course like I say we got those red inserts on the bumpers now a little bit of an image of the seat telling about lateral support and how good it is in a sporty car and then look at the dash. The dash wasn't vastly different really from any of the other models, was it really? Yeah, we get a rev counter and then we get a sportier looking steering wheel. And then finally we get the final model actually at this time for the Sierra Sapphire, the range topping gear. Looks like we do get alloy wheels. Or if it's not going to fool us by saying they're optional, but looks like we do get them. Um, but let's have a look at the text. Let's find out a little bit more about this range topper. So the Sierra Sapphire gear, rather nicely next to it, a little tiny image of the gear with an actual number plate, so D32KHJ. Is that a real number plate? I'm not sure, but it would be nice to know at least. Eventually I'm going to come to one of these vehicles and they're still going to be around. Not happened yet. Uh, gear of Turin's name has long been associated with cars that provide outstanding luxury and refinement at equally attractive prices. True to the value for money reputation, the new Sierra Sapphire gear is packed with beneficial features tailored for keen drivers and passengers who like to travel in style. So now we have got uh, an engine choice again. We can go down um, to a 1.8 again, or we can have that two liter EFI like the GLS. We can get high-tech polycarbonate bumpers with wide body side moldings, color toned and bright inserts and integral front fog lights. We get electronically operated and heated door mirrors with body colored housing. We also got this and we might as well say it while we're going past because we can see it here. It says fitted as standard to the gear for its electronic sound system has its own separate amplifier now. The air conditioning option above is a practical addition to luxury. So you can get air conditioning, but as an option, I won't imagine it would be that common an option in the UK. Still at this time, we wasn't that keen to put air conditioning on our cars. All of a sudden, now everyone feels like they need them. We also, of course, get tinted glass, that tilt or slide glass sunroof, central locking, front and rear courtesy lights, complete with delay timer operates on all four doors overhead console with adjustable map reading lights and I'm just going to move the camera down manually uh, we get a variable intermittent front wipers front seats trimmed in astral cloth with pneumatic lumbar adjustment plus height adjustment for the driver's seat rear compartment with heating and ventilation ducts integral head restraints, central armrest and front seat back mat pockets. And now we've got electric windows, not just on the front, on all the windows. Again, it gives a little bit of a steering wheel shot, a bit of indication of some of the switch gear. A lot of these were blanking at plugs actually on the lowest spec models. So what have we got here? We've got such things as um, heated rear window, which you know, it's pretty standard, but we've got front and rear fog lamps, and we've also got an unusual option here of a heated windscreen on there. 
So actually, surprisingly, the Gear version is actually a little bit more expensive to insure than the GLS, which is surprising. So a Group 6 now for the Gear 2 litre. Um, extra cost options fitted to the Sierra Sapphire Gear above include auto transmission, headlamp wash wipe, and metallic paint. Oh, interesting. Headlamp wash wipe was an optional extra on the gear. I didn't know that. Um, it also tells us the uh, illuminated car graphic. Where is the illuminated car graphic? Oh, it's, no, it says just about see it on the edge there. Warns of boot or door left ajar, low air temperature, and bulb failure. The fuel con computer. Shown is an extra cost option replacing the gear's three function digital clock. Although, so surprising, they're showing lots of sort of extras you kind of like think would be on there anyway. But just did it mention the alloy wheels? I don't think it mentioned alloy wheels, did it? I'm gonna have to have a look to see if those alloy wheels are indeed standard or an option. Yeah, just had to flick to the back page. Yeah, it's saying alloy wheels standard wheel it does not not really making a big deal about it but there we go and then a look at the gear interior i think the big thing obviously is that we've got electric windows all around but we've also got those head restraints now in the back seat price range for these cars so the very base model i.e that one that was just called the saloon not even an l the Sapphire started at seven thousand two hundred seventy-one seventy-nine, so that's your starting price for your Ford Sierra Sapphire. And if you wanted the L, you had to move up to seven thousand five hundred and ninety-six pound. Now there was, of course, a huge range of prices. They really jumped up. So if you're looking at something like a Gear, a four-door Sapphire, the Gear version, ten thousand three hundred and twenty-four pounds. 97 for the 1.8 and if you wanted a two litre gear it jumped up to 10,845 pounds for the lesser gls it was 9,679 pounds 71. now we did talk a little bit about extras and weird things like headlamp wipers um, so they were an option even on the gls incidentally which i always thought they were standard piece of kit i know my mum's did but it was later so maybe it became standard later on um so headlamp wipers are here look 142 pounds 52 if you want to put wipers on your sierra sapphire um so you can even have on a gl i don't think i've ever seen a gl with headlamp wipers but you can have it on the gl gls and gear sapphires for 144 pounds 52 interesting and like i say alloy wheels you could get alloys for your gls if you wanted we can just about make it out at the bottom or at least i hope you can but i'm going to read it out anyway so alloys 239 pounds 41 if you want to put alloys on your gls standard on the gear it's like you can get special wheel covers if you want for 75 pounds i don't know what it means by special um but you know your very base model didn't even have wheel trim so maybe you wanted to do that i don't know so there we go the long awaited ford sierra sapphire long awaited in that it took a while to get it on this brochure and this is the model i wanted to talk about really because this is the first time we've seen it in a full range brochure but long time as well if you was a cortina owner you were still wanting a cortina sized vehicle with a boot hurrah you can finally get it you don't have to put up with an orion so there we go let me know your memories of the ford sierra sapphire next week we'll look at the standard sierra or the sierra with a hatch but the well, I said the updated one, but actually we're going to look at the month before. So we're going to look at the older version first, and then we'll look at the updated one the week after, if that's okay with you. But thank you so much for watching today. Please do subscribe if you've not done it already. That is all completely free. We'll end by saying thank you so much for watching. And of course, thank you to all those who are still watching at this point. I know the Ford episodes tend to be a bit longer because there's so much to get through so i hope you don't mind a 30 plus minute episode but appreciate you watching for sure you can also become a member now for a very small fee have a look on youtube and quarterlight to have a look at that it's not very much you don't get much for it though i'm completely honest 
more to support the channel at this time and then we'll get more members we'll start doing extra little things but thank you so much for those who have become a member it's hugely important and really helps the channel and keeps us producing so much information i do appreciate it we'll also add a couple of boxes here one will be for all the episodes we've looked at so far and obviously that will increase as time goes by and we cover the other episodes and one will probably just be a random video look out for tomorrow for the uh, special edition not sure what that's going to be yet but you'll have to wait and see saturdays we always do special editions Thank you for watching. Please do take care. We'll see you very soon. And goodbye.